This is Create the Next from Pro CFO Partners, where every week we explore strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help today's businesses put their financial picture in context. Welcome back to Create the Next. I'm Chris Mitliff, and today I'm joined by Kathleen Quinn from Pro CFO Partners. And Kathleen, it's great to have you on uh, from the Chicago area, like so many of us on the team are. And uh, I wonder how that informs some of your professional perspective um, as a CFO. But uh, we're talking today about um, supply chain distribution industry. There's a lot going on there uh, these days. And I'm really interested in your expertise here and on some of the ways that you think uh, that distribution industry is facing some unique challenges and what those challenges are and how we can overcome it. So welcome to the show. And uh, tell us a little bit about your perspective on this distribution industry and where we're sitting and where we're headed. Sure, thanks. It's great to be on the show. And uh, as a lifelong Chicago area person, you grow up knowing that really Chicago is the center of the country and a massive hub for transportation, whether it's trucking, uh, a lot of Great Lakes freight flows through Chicago, air traffic or air cargo at O'Hare and all that. And so it's really interesting to have that perspective. And throughout the pandemic, we have all seen how how distribution has just changed and how much harder it is. I'd like to describe it as how the demand and the supply are physically getting connected. Um, And it's everything. And so um, I really like to talk about trade and distribution and supply chain. It impacts the whole organization. And I think we've all learned in the past year how important that is to have everybody involved, have finance, working with supply chain and sales and marketing and production. Do you feel like uh, a new awareness was brought to that sort of um, holistic or chain reaction relationship? Because for a while, maybe marketing could be insulated from what was going on in the supply chain, or maybe, you know, uh, sales just was going to focus on making the sale. They didn't need to understand how pricing was derived, or maybe you disagree, but do we have a new perspective on how all of these components are essential to the big picture, even the customer experience? Yeah, and I think it was a big shock to a lot of people. Um, as a consumer, it was shocking to go to the grocery store and the famous toilet paper example, and more seriously in terms of the formula shortage recently, and that this this can happen in the United States. You can go someplace and have an empty shelf. And it made everybody um, look a little bit deeper into how their whole supply chain, is there resiliency in it? Is there a redundancy in it? And then very reactionary, reactionally work with marketing and say, right, okay, do we have product that's in stock that we know we can get to customers and perhaps focus on that? Don't promote the things we know we're out of stock with, we can't get someplace and focus on alternatives, if it's pack size, configuration, uh, and, and, and look at it that way with, with marketing. It's been a great experience. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, point that you make around, I guess, contingency. So here's what we have. Here's what we can sell. Let's let's really amplify that. Let's uh, you know let's minimize or de-escalate the things that we can't. But how do we innovate around some of those issues? Or is it about creating new supply chain relationships? I'm thinking about technology. You know, uh, computers and laptops are are taking months out because transistors and chips can't be. Uh, crafted in time because in China, they're still in serious lockdown mode or cars uh, have been really affected by microprocessors, which is not the thing you think of when you think of a car, but all of these things are sort of connected. But do we just have to say, ah, that's it. The supply chain is is really screwed up right now, everybody. Let's wait for 18 months for it to heal itself. Or how do we, how do we, how do we deal with it in a way that isn't just sort of uh, postponing uh, action on what we can't do? It requires a lot of open and transparent communication, both within the company that's struggling to uh, meet consumer demand. And then you have to really have a transparent, proactive conversation with all of your vendors, whether it's your ingredient supplier, your packaging supplier, and we've all learned super critically, your trucking company, if you're importing the port where they're importing it to, there's so many different people involved in getting product both into the country and then from end to end, and then into the hands of consumers. Um, It's also been a lot about 
historically for the past 20 years, supply chain has been Excel spreadsheet driven. It, it has been probably because maybe some finance people, not me, uh, have said, oh, you know, supply chain is overhead. Do we really need to invest in it? And we all, and there's probably not a business globally that deals in hard goods that did not have a bit of a wake up call and say, we need to understand our process. We need to understand the infrastructure that's available and figure out and understand it's part of the value creation for a company and not just an overhead expense. What a great point. And even as you're talking about, um, you know, people are, are used to managing their supply chain on spreadsheets. I think there's probably a lot of inefficiencies that exist even throughout the systems and processes that operate inside of an organization where we might be thinking really seriously about an ERP or about the things that make our sales function. And we really invest in that. But supply chain sort of infrastructure Eh, it runs itself or it takes care of itself or this thing that we've been doing for 15 years to manage or report on it or to understand it has been working fine. And as you said, now it's like this huge shock of cold water. Do you feel like there's been a new sort of awareness of maybe the things we took for granted or the inefficiencies just in how we're managing supply chains in organizations and how do we deal with that? Yes. Like anytime in any of my jobs, I've had to deal with getting things around you never worried, right? You could always find a trucker. You could find a truck. You could find chassis. You could find an ocean-going vessel. You could find a freight forward with capacity. You, the gas prices weren't what they are currently. And so it just worked in the background. We said, okay, customer X is going to order 40,000 pounds of product to be delivered on a schedule. And it happened seamlessly. And then the pandemic, when everything stopped, if we think about it for a second, Everything physically stopped where it was. Trucks stopped, chassis, truck drivers, everybody stopped. And in supply chain, once you do that, you just create a massive hiccup because the system had been built on continual movement. And when everybody stopped and went home or didn't go home, it created shocks in the system. The ports in Europe weren't shipping for a bit. So all those containers are stuck in Europe. All the product is stuck in Europe. Then you have warehouses here in the United States got depleted super quickly because there was no inbound freight. I forget what it was, four, six or eight weeks. Then all the containers have to get unloaded, but nobody's working because of COVID. And it just, just spiraled into the situation of everybody had to literally, we'd be in meetings, stop and think, okay, how many people do we really need on first shift? How many people do we need on second shift? Do we need to bring people in over the weekend? And everybody, the famous word of the pandemic is pivot. There was an instant pivot to how do we respond? How do we help our customers? How do we help ourselves and make sure that we don't financially harm ourselves as well? And so pricing throughout the entire supply chain became a much more proactive and strategic conversation and decision-making process. How do you feel like, or maybe do you have some advice or guidance on, these are, these are things that touch, uh, that are at the core of an organization's sort of identity, uh, revenue, uh, you know, profitability, uh, um, getting our goods out to our customers or receiving what we need so that our people can go to work. And that affects us, I don't know, emotionally. That affects an organization sort of um, its energy, not just its ability to do business, but its sense of doing business. How has that, I don't know, shaped the way, because we know that customers have had we, nobody thought about baby formula. And so we really had to think about baby formula. And now it's that sensitivity is brought top of mind. If I'm in an organization where this has really been, I've been struggling with this, how do I keep my morale high? How do I keep my folks engaged? How do I not just sort of say, this is overwhelming. Uh, I, I'm in over my head. I don't know what to do. And just sort of uh, remove myself from panic mode. What do I do? Do you have some advice? There, there are two parts of it. I think this is an excellent opportunity for leadership to be transparent with their teams about what the existing situation is and what is the struggle. It's also a great opportunity for leadership to broaden the problem solving pool and idea generation within an organization. And when you do both of those, you're transparent and you ask a wider group of people for help and insight and ideas. Um, 
you have more people in, uh, with ideas and input into the process, and you end up with a greater variety of things to talk about and hopefully better outcomes. I love this second idea. Let's unpack that a little bit. What do you mean more specifically? Who should I be talking to? Who should I be? If I'm used to talking to the same six people on my in my C-suite or in the boardroom, who should I be reaching out to? Who in the organization do I normally not hear from that I should be hearing from? Or should I be focusing groups or, or surveying? Or t- Give me some, some ideas. I would say the next level, one or two down of what we might call frontline management, boots on the ground management. What, what do they see? What do they hear from their team? What are they seeing when they talk to the vendors and suppliers? Because sometimes there can be, you know, the CEO is here and the doc receiver is down here, right? There could be three, four, five levels, depending on the organization. And the same thing for outbound shipping, the people loading trucks and all of that. And sometimes they'll have, they'll have great anecdotal experience. It says, you know what, the trucks from trucking company A they're the best at showing up in the morning. They're terrible at the afternoon, but they can show up in the morning. And, and just start to problem solve like that. Or it's really hard to get the second shift staffed because in the pandemic, there's no after school care. And anybody who has kids and involved in child care can't do that. So is there a way we can just think about rebalancing the workflow the work population. So we have people really working 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. So people can get home for kids at school. Um, And it also could be calling vendors and saying like accounts payable sometimes is the person who gets all of the crabby people calling and looking for money. You could talk to the AP person and say, what are you hearing from vendor XYZ? What are they frustrated about? Why aren't they paying the bills on time? and really start to work more collaboratively across the entire organization, both inside and outside. And then the same with customers. I mean, I've been in situations where you say, okay, you ordered four truckloads. I only have two. What can we work on to prioritize the first two trucks to go out and the other two trucks will hopefully go out in two to four days? These are great ideas, and they're not the sorts of things that would show up on a financial report. We wouldn't know that, you know, the afternoon is a worse time, yeah. the morning is a better time. And it's absolutely true that it requires, you know, just open communication to understand these things. That, for me, would be the solution to some of that morale stuff or that um, that sort of transparency is I'm being asked by the C-suite what it's like to do my job. Yeah. Oh, I want to pitch in. That's a That's a good move. That's a smart move. And I'm a strong believer, and I've worked with a lot of people as well, who believe you get out of your office and walk around and get to know everybody. You know, who's doing the unloading, who's sweeping up production, who's loading the trucks, the people, pay, you know, people paying the bills, demand planners, particularly in this type of environment. And the more people are engaged, the more likely they are to come up with suggestions and be committed and go the extra mile. These are such good ideas. Do you have um, advice where the customer is concerned? Should I be offering? I I love the idea of transparency. And we saw a lot of that. We've seen a lot of that. Um, And I think people have, have in a lot of ways, developed a new level of patience or expectation or sort of flexibility with how things go. But should I be offering discounts? Should I be, you know, completely changing up so that I'm offering different products, uh, as you pointed out, or the things that I can do now, let's sell out of that stuff or just what's, what's, what are some ways I can take some of the things you're sharing and turn that into a customer facing component as well? I would start with sharing what the existing struggle is of the moment. So if your struggle is finding trucks, if your struggle is the ingredient suppliers, if your struggle is containers inbound from Europe, to be to start with that fact and that data point. We we are encountering X event. Trucks are not showing up because for whatever reason. Um, and going back to the do you want two, you have the four trucks you offer, do you want two? Discounting in this type of environment is incredibly difficult, largely right now because of inflationary pressures. So labor rates have gone up. Um, Some people will say a a 10-year disconnect in labor rates closed in 18 months, which was a shock to the system in terms of labor costs. So it's really difficult to be discounting because people do have profit pressures right now because of rising commodity costs, labor costs, and energy costs. 
I think it's really a partnership approach to you'll make more money when you have the right product in the right place. And then also talk about uh, some of it's brainstorming, like say if a customer had a central warehouse in the middle of the United States, say in Kansas, and you have a conversation, well, do you have other ones closer to the coast, further north or further south? That might be a better option. We may be able to get product there faster. You know, one of the things that uh, I love to do uh, here on our on our on our episodes of Create the Next is sort of is is to give listeners and leaders you know practical tactical advice. Uh, so the conceptual, but then so what do I do? And one of the things that I'm really taking from our conversation is uh, less less about how do you fix this sophisticated, nuanced, complex issue of the supply chain distribution sort of model can't do it there's too many parts but what i'm hearing you say is transparency involvement communication are ways to not fix but manage and uh and cope when these situations are happening and in some ways that can strengthen relationships inside the organization with vendors with suppliers uh, even with customers and i think that's really good advice yeah collaborative problem solving is always great that's there's no there's no stronger uh, bullet point we can put at the end of our conversation than that. Uh, Kathleen Quinn, so nice to meet you. So nice to have you on the show. And thank you so much for your expertise and your generosity and sharing it with us today. Just a ton to unpack. And for me, I think just to feel a little bit less, uh, you know, panicked uh, about where we are and just to take some actions that can help us um, cope is, I think, a really important step inside of this business environment. Thank you. You're welcome. Great to be here. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for watching. And a special thanks to our subscribers. Consider becoming one today. Visit ProCFOPartners.com for more strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help you put your business's financial picture in context.